wanting to go near the man was too slow on the uptake with an excuse to brush the mobster off. Uh, sure, why not, he said, forcing cheer into his voice. Frankie raised his hand, snapped his finger. No way could the snap be heard over the crowd noise, yet, miraculously, a waif of a waitress in a tight mini dress appeared. What can I get you, Mr. Carbo? <laughs> That's my favorite part. <laughs> Let's not analyze that. <laughs> so your boy got a draw, Carbo said. Not his best performance, but it beats losing. You get a bonus when your guy wins? Nope, I'm just a salaried working stiff. Charlotte returned with a drink and set it down on a napkin in front of Angelo. He thanked her, then took a healthy pull on the drink, even though he wasn't a bourbon guy. He needed to calm his nerves. If Frankie were about to put the squeeze on him to alter a fight, he needed a little courage to turn the offer down. He'd never tamper with the fight, no matter what. What makes this book, a, a boxing trainer's journey, a great read, is that we went into history and we pulled up the greatest fights from the greatest fighters. Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, and of course Angelo Dundee worked intimately with these fighters. They, and they were great American sportsmen, some of the greatest men in our history in terms of sports. And if we still have those fights on YouTube that we can pull them up and we can look at them still and and this book brings it alive. And if you love boxing and you love those great sports heroes, this book brings them alive. So I had my GWG tough skins on, <laughs> a black t-shirt, and I had a vest that was uh, soft leather with fringes like Davy Crockett. <laughs> and I had my, they're either plastic or vinyl, I had these cowboy boots. My parents were not gonna give me leather cowboy boots because I was nine. <laughs> so I was, all, I was dressed to kill and ready to go. So, uh, yeah, I sat on the bench and my teacher said, okay, uh, Jonathan Brown is going to play a C chord. So I played a C chord. <laughs> and then after that, I had this, I think it was some sonata or an etude or something like that. And it was just two pages long. And I flew into it. I was going way too fast. But I got through the first page, halfway down the second page, <clears throat> and I crashed. Mm -hmm. So I backed up and hit that measure again and I fell over again, made another mistake. Mm. I tried a third time, because the third time's a charm. That was a big phrase in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I screwed it up. So like every self-respecting, red-blooded Canadian nine-year-old, I started to cry. <laughs> <laughs> and you're laughing. I'm Chrome Oxide, the author of the recent book, 28 Minutes Into the Future, a collection of humorous science fiction and fantasy short stories. I recommend this book. It's not only the story about boxing, it's a story about a trainer, and it places boxing and training in the time element in which it's happening. So it's not just sports, it's the whole world, and how this all dovetails together. Ali came out at the opening bell, floating like a butterfly, as boasted. He flicked his jab at Will, popping George in the face. Faking a jab, Ali threw a straight right hand, catching Foreman, flush. The crowd roared approval. George, seven years Ali's junior, and the favorite by two and a half times, became visibly frustrated. Uh-oh, he's poked the bear, boys, Angelo shouted to his cornermen. George had no answers for Ali's speed. Still, he pressed forward, although not bobbing and moving like Joe Fraser. George moved like a slow-moving robot with thunder in both hands. Eventually, he cut the ring down on Ali, pinned him against the ropes, and went to town. Uh, what was the difference um, in writing this book, which is a novel based on a real-life story, uh -huh. uh, compared to your fiction novels? Uh, the biggest difference is, uh, you know, I had to do research for, you know, the novel-based. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had to be accurate, but because it was a novel-based, I, I, I still got to make stuff up, you know. I, so, the, yeah, it really came down, the big difference was, def was uh, research. I mean, there is research with my mystery stuff, mm -hmm. you know, but that usually is something to do with a gun or police procedure or something like that. But with this, I really had to get to know who the man was and how he was with his family and keep that authentic and accurate. Uh, what do you like the most about your, your hero in your book, about Dundee? Dundee, I, I like that uh, 
I like that the fighters all wanted him to be their trainer because of how he treated them. He was always fair with, with his fighters. And there was a lot of corruption and dishonesty and stuff in boxing, and Angelo never let that stuff touch him. And, you know, there are some times when he wasn't treated well, and he was always a gentleman, but uh, he was always above, um, just a real, real statesman. So that, that's what I really liked about Dundee. Uh, what kind of readers do you think will enjoy your book? Obviously, people who are into sports and boxing, mm -hmm. but I think... Yeah, I think it's more, um, if this was a movie, and already people have said that it might, it would definitely, they can see it as a, either a series or a movie. But uh, it would be under the category of drama, you know. So it's it's not just sports at all. Definitely not. It's uh, you know there's there's family and there, there's struggle and there's perseverance and um, and action and there's humor in it too. Uh, what's the feeling when you launch I a book? I feel amazing because uh, I like I don't mind talking to a group of people, but I don't love reading, <laughs> even though they're my own words. And, and it went well. It, uh, I'm definitely happy with it. So the feeling is uh, I'm elated. <laughs> I'm over the moon. <laughs>